Hey! Hey, Katie! You wanna watch me book it down this hill? Uh, I don't know, Chad. That looks pretty steep. What happens if you trip? <laughs> Katie! Do these look like the magnificent calves of an inexperienced pleb? No, I didn't think so. Dude, seriously? Listen to Katie. That path is covered in tree branches. You could actually break your- Ah, uh, did I ask you, PJ? Gosh, just shut up and let me do this! It's time to go fast. Oh, oh my god, Jesus! Oh my, oh my, I didn't even know I could do this! Oh, freaking Christ! Oh! Yeah, my crush actually did this. He sprained his ankle. He also pulled his ween. Crushes are difficult. Heck, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that crushing on someone is by far one of the most stress-invoking experiences one will ever undergo. Now let's be clear, having a crush isn't inherently stressful, that's not what I'm saying. It's what can potentially result from it. Like, okay, you like that person, right? Fantastic. But because you do, anything that this person says or does can now sway your mood. One minute you're sad, next thing you know, crush texts you, bam, you're skipping through daisies. But on the flip side, you could be having the best day of your life. You know, skies are blue, the memes are fresh, it's a heckin' holiday. But all of a sudden, your chin is gross. Yeah, that's an issue. The greater issue, however, is that your crush typically doesn't know the power they have until you tell them. Like, surely if they knew the immense impact their words possessed, they would go a little easier on you and mind their words a bit when you're around. On the other hand, some people aren't so considerate. Why, a few crushes might even get drunk off that power and use you like a puppet until they toss you aside in favor of a better, sexier puppet who probably wears pants. Where are your pants? Pants! PJ! <laughs> We're getting off topic. My first crush was a boy not named Chad, and Chad was a turd. A prime example of an emotional exploiter, an extreme opportunist. He was also my best friend. Yes, I know how that sounds, but listen, okay? Chad wasn't so bad when we first met. In fact, he was probably one of the coolest guys I knew, or, you know, as cool as any guy can be when binge-watching Naruto and playing RuneScape. Mm. Lady killer. Him and I geeked out plenty, so it seems only inevitable that I, an idiot, developed a monster crush on him. But crushes aren't the romanticized daydream they're cracked up to be, and that's a lesson I'd be learning the hard way. Thing is, Chad didn't like me that way. His eyes were set on another, a sweet gal by the name of Katie. And this lass was no stranger to me, dear viewers, no no. Katie was actually a very dear friend of mine, something that Chad found out about when he told me about his feelings for her. I also like to believe this was around the same time he found out about my feelings, without me so much as having to confess. What can I say? It was obvious. I wore my kokoro right on my sleeve. <laughs> that was your first mistake. I never intended on telling Chad how I felt about him, but this dude had other plans in mind. A plan that involved winning the heart of his dear Katie and using my loyalty to get what he wanted. All he had to do was take the right steps. Look here, this guy knew I liked him, okay? My friends knew, Katie knew, but that wasn't enough for him to act on, obviously. Cause think of how easy it would have been for me to just deny my filios and pretend he was only a bro. Nah, man, he needed some mutual confirmation. So you know what he did? Chad forced me to skip class with him one day, which was unsettling on its own because I specifically remember questioning why and him simply refusing to answer. Boy just hushed me with a little smirk and said, You'll see. Which honestly is such a red flag. But he didn't give me an out. He just stayed quiet and took me all the way around to the back of the school where there were no witnesses or security cameras, might I add. And after a while of lingering and second guessing, he pinned me against the wall, no warning, caged between his arms, guys, and said, Admit you like me. I, I what? You heard me. I, I'm sorry, do you think I- Oh, I don't think. I know. So say it. Say you like me. 
Yikes. How did I let this slide? How? How? It was so creepy and abrasive. This guy literally and figuratively had my back against the wall so that he could get ammunition to use against me in the future. Ew. Miraculously, I evaded answering at the time despite pushiness, but with him pulling stunts like that sporadically, I was bound to cave. <laughs> And I did. I told him I liked him. A lot. Ugh. This one just makes good sense, right? If you're itching to use and abuse someone, you gotta make sure their feelings are deep and genuine. They need to stick around for the long haul. If they love you, they better be ready to take that dodgeball to the chest and sit in the out corner. That's how you know it's real. So as soon as he confirmed my crush, good old Chad here started asking some pretty intense questions. It was basically a really uncomfortable pop quiz in the middle of any perfectly decent conversation. And I'm not even kidding, they typically went something like this. So, how much are you willing to do for the people you love? That's a pretty specific question you're asking, my guy. But, uh, I don't know. Anything, I guess. Really? Don't know if I believe that. I mean, you'd have to be able to prove it. So, could you? Could I what exactly? Would you prove it? Would you prove that you're willing to do absolutely anything for, I don't know, me? Chad, what the heck does that have to do with Dragon Ball? For real though, I never knew how to react to that. It felt more personal than I was used to, and I had a feeling that I shouldn't say anything. But me, not wanting to assume the worst of Chad, still answered with sincerity. I told him that I believed love was a selfless thing, that if I ever did anything nice for him, it would have nothing to do with him reciprocating my feelings, but everything to do with wanting him to be happy. Because that was my goal. I wanted happiness for him. Should've kept your mouth shut, you dumb. As some of you might have guessed, all his actions up to this point were leading to Chad asking me for favors. For a good while, this dude had been sizing me up, just so he could start asking for the one thing I'd been quietly dreading. It already hurt hearing him talk about how much he liked Katie all the time. It especially hurt when he'd go out of his way to compare the two of us and laugh at me whenever I felt inadequate you suck, Chad. But now, he was finally doing it. He was asking me to chat up Katie for him and convince her to go out with him. Hey, PJ, I need you to talk to Katie for me. Hey, PJ, will you talk to Katie? Can you make sure to make me sound good? Hey, PJ, I got Katie these chocolates. Would you be a pal and give them to her for me and make sure she knows that I got them for her? Of course I'd feel skeptical sometimes and outright tell him, no, I'm not going to do that. But because he was such a smart boy -o, he'd refer back to everything he gathered from me in step two and snap me right back into place. Didn't you say you'd do anything for me? Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I want to feel more sympathy for you, young me. But you really dry my grapes. I couldn't even complain about any of the stunts Chad was pulling, because deep down I knew! I put myself there. I put myself in a position where I was letting a total jerk take advantage of me. I took the insults, I answered his questions, and I did whatever he asked of me, because even though I knew he was wrong, he convinced me I'd be far more in the wrong than him by doing nothing when I'd promised him I'd do anything. I wanted to stick by my word, prioritize a promise over my well-being, and because of that, he found all sorts of ways to keep me trapped. Anytime I ever mustered up the better sense to pull away from our friendship, Chad went into flirt mode, like, yeah sure, he'd rub it in my face that we weren't an item, but hold on now, hold on. Maybe. He'll change his mind. So stick around, sweet cheeks, the ride ain't over. He flirted with me between classes. He sent me messages on the age-old system of MySpace that were less than appropriate. And the big granddaddy gesture that locked me in for good. This dude, once again, took me into a secluded area of the school, got me right where he needed me to be. And guys, he kissed me. Haste. He kissed me right off of my mouth, my, my virgin lips. 
He had the balls to kiss me when he claimed to like another girl, which you'd think would be enough to open my eyes, right? You'd think I would be smart enough to pull away, right? You know what to do. <sighs> Yeah, I still stuck by him. One kiss and I was all the way back in daisy skipping la la land. But like I said, the daydream couldn't last. Eventually, Katie did start talking to him, and as soon as that happened, he dang near forgot all about me. He did keep me around, but I mostly spent the majority of my ninth grade year watching Chad show off while I helped. But summer came and left, tenth grade started, and before I knew it, these two were a thing and it utterly broke my heart. And that was it. I never spoke to Chad again. I did find out from Katie a few years later that she dumped Chad because he was showing some controlling, manipulative behavior in their relationship, which didn't surprise me. But I couldn't take much joy in the karma, and I don't want you guys to take any joy out of it either. What I want is for you to learn from my mistakes. I said this once, but don't feel pressured into justifying the foul actions of those close to you solely because they're close to you. I obviously saw this guy's true colors emerge at some point, but I never stood up to him because I felt I had to justify everything he did. But that was a mistake. And while I won't keep being hard on myself and basically victim blaming a ninth grade me, it's fair to say I held some amount of blame for allowing it to go that far. But now I know better. And sure, anyone can say, fight back, run away, cut them off. But it's hard. It's hard not to justify, and even harder to see the warning signs through the pink haze of our daydreams. After all, when we finally look at those red flags through a rose-colored glass, they'll all just look like flags. I want to go on the record here and say that no one is obligated to return your feelings, okay? It is not wrong for a person not to like you back. What is wrong is if a person uses you, and I think we could all agree across the board that that just is just it's no, it's no bueno. It's no bueno. And with that out of the way, let me just say I have never had a video take so long to make. Like, I was actually early on starting this video up, and then everything that could go wrong went wrong. I lost images. I lost entire audio files. I had to record this twice. There were delays, malfunction. I... Actual family health things, I did, uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry that it took so long to get all this out, and I'm just so happy that you guys stuck around long enough to watch this video. I want to give a big shout out and thanks to Something Else YT, otherwise known as Adam, for voicing Chad. I'm sorry that you had to voice such a suckish character, but thank you for putting up with it. And please, anyone, don't harass Adam, okay? He wasn't Chad. Sometimes people hear other people voicing these lines and they think they're the actual people, but no, it's, it's a bit. It was, it was just a bit. Just tell him you love him and that he's a great creator, okay? And I guess with that said, that's pretty much a wrap. I'm done with this video. I don't want to keep looking or thinking about it anymore. This pajama party's over, but don't worry. We'll be back next time. Say bye, boys. Bye-bye. And stay hydrated. <laughs>